He know that, cuz. Folks, I'll drop you, nigga. Come on. Let me just fight it, bro. You better bang the hood. Let me try, cuz. What are you doing, cuz? What are you doing, cuz? Laws laid, the rules made, don't no, ever test it. But I have something to say to you about the fact that I want to defend myself, defend myself, defend myself, defend myself. Since 1994, over 10,000 people have lost their lives to gang violence in Los Angeles alone. Bloods and Crips, two of the most well known street gangs, have menaced the streets of LA with drugs, guns, and murder for over 25 years, despite their positive pro-black origins. It was 1965, just after the Watts riots, when the gangs of today began to take shape. Early black groups like the Slawsons, Gladiators, and the Businessmen all claimed parts of LA, but violence against one another was almost unheard of and was usually personal in nature. By this time, the popularity in the Black Panther Party began to grow and many of the local groups and clubs put their rivalries to an end and joined together to form the US organization and a Los Angeles chapter of the Black Panther Party. These groups led the way to a social conscious pro-black agenda for the black community. In the late 60s, all of the unity among blacks would come to an end as COINTELPRO infiltrated the Panther Party on a national level. They also used the same tactics of deception to destroy the newfound unity and pride of the black race throughout Los Angeles. After numerous incidents with the US organization, the Black Panther Party would lose its leader, our Prentice Bunchy Carter, in a shootout on the campus of UCLA. Some say it was over jealousy, and others say control. But as a result, dissension grew as blacks began to separate once again. After a lack of strong role models and political leadership, black teens looked at themselves and started their own organizations. One of the first being started by a young Fremont High School student named Raymond Washington. His group, the Baby Avenues, would become one of the first Crip gangs in Los Angeles. The gang would try to emulate the Panthers in appearance by wearing black leather jackets and sunglasses, but lacked the discipline and leadership of the Panthers. By this time, the number of Crip gangs was rapidly growing, as well as the Brims, who eventually became the first blood gang. These numbers would soon reach epidemic proportions. As the county reported in 1980, there were over 30,000 active gang members and over 355 gang-related murders for the year. During the 80s, gangs and gang violence steadily increased along with an influx of cocaine and automatic weapons. It is rumored on the street that the CIA infiltrated the Bloods and Crips in the same manner as they did the Panthers and introduced them to a new form of rock cocaine called crack. With the introduction of crack, street gangs began to capitalize on the drug trade and the territories began to multiply. Gangs whose neighborhoods had railroad tracks began to find open, abandoned rail cars with crates of automatic weapons. Uzis, 
MAC-10s, and AK-47s flooded the streets. And soon after, the infamous drive-by will come to life. How ironic that nearly 20 years after the fall of the Black Panther Party, an organization deeply rooted with the pro-black social conscious that provided meals to the children of the community and gave young black males positive role models and a sense of pride. Would we see the same generation of children from the Panthers era grow to start their own organization slated with a mission of murder, mayhem, and money? blindly manipulated by the same tactics as the Panthers and other pro-black organizations before them, but bent more toward a divide and conquer mentality. This mentality has to date been responsible for over 15,000 murders and the recruitment of over 175,000 gang members in Los Angeles County and an estimated 650,000 nationwide. Despite these facts, Young African-American males and females are still joining gangs at an alarming rate of nearly 10 to 20 per day. Why? Why do we join gangs? Why do we as young men and women gang bang? We set out to find an answer. After going through some of the roughest neighborhoods in LA, we talked to the OGs and the youngsters about why they join gangs and how they view life. Here's what they had to say. Shit, something just happened. When did you start banging? And that shit, it, it wasn't like no question of when uh, a nigga was gonna start. That shit for me, that shit just like handed down. Everybody you seeing before and after me, this shit just like a culture, a religion, just like you born, like here you go. Like that's just, that's just it for you. It's just handed. Like now, it wasn't even when you start, it just activities. You know what I mean? When did yeah. you start banging? Shit, I was born in this shit, really. Um, uh, I was really born in the game banging, man. I come from the East. I ain't gonna say I game bang out the womb, but you know what I'm saying? You you adapt different lifestyles, you know what I'm saying? Everybody got some kind of game bang in, in formality. R rather, if you go to college, you go to school, you know what I mean? I just choose to do some, you know, just some street stuff. That's just how I was raised. 78, for sure. Crip. You know, they was hanging out all night. Mama wasn't saying shit to him, smoking weed, coming in the house and shit, doing what the fuck he wanted to do. Like, that was a life to do. You're in the streets, you're doing what the fuck you want to do. You come home with fresh shit every day. Shit. What else you had to do? Man, the shit chose me, you know what I mean? I didn't, you know, it's just some shit just, you know. Man, it happened like that. Nigga was in the hub, you know what I mean? Just, whoa, man. Next thing, you're a part of that shit. You just grew up in the environment from the block. I was born and raised on the block like that. It just happened from the turf. Back during them times, it was just, you know, we all going to school together. We living in the same neighborhood, hanging out together. And it just, that became my second family instead of my home family. So, you know, we all just grew up together kicking it. And it just developed that way. Why I start banging? Just because. What's the thing to do at the time, you know? Homies, having fun, you know, doing things to enemies, people you don't get along with. Activity, that's gang banging. I've been banging since fifth grade. That's like, what, that's 95? Summer of 95, you know what I'm saying? Nigga had his first pair of red laces and shit, you know what I'm saying? On the real, like that with him. 